So a lot of really interesting buying opportunities are occurring right now. If you have cash, cash is king. You can demand what price you want to pay. Uh, there are a lot of people who maybe they have to sell their collections. Maybe they got in too deep. Maybe there is a medical emergency that a loved one is facing. You never know. There are a million different reasons why people sell their collections. But uh, one key note is you cannot base buying a collection. If you are a the seller or you're the buyer, you cannot base it on market price uh, if there has been no recent sales and if the quantity of sales isn't very high. I think a lot of how Alpha Investment has trained his timmies, you know, the diamond hands and steady course, uh, a lot of them cannot do that right now. A lot of them, they reach out and they uh, basically tell me, hey, you know, I need to get out. I need to get out right now. There is nothing I can do. And I think uh, in terms of where people are going, right, um, they probably just don't want to do paper cardboard anymore. There's a lot of people who are looking to sell out of everything they have. And that is, in my opinion, quite, um, quite intriguing. So back to the idea. Um, when you have a card that has very little volume and is hasn't sold recently or has not sold in more than a few, then you cannot. Um, you cannot base it on that. You, you cannot base it on that. And the reason that you can't base it on the market price is the market price looks at the last sales, but doesn't consider how long ago those sales were. And if there were numerous enough of them to judge, you know, warrant a, a price gauge. So market price on recent sets makes a lot of sense. There is a lot of volume. We're talking about recent Pokemon and magic sets. Market price on something like a soul ring from beta probably doesn't make sense because when's the last time one of those sold? Now, I'm not saying the show ring from beta doesn't have value. Of course, it has value, but the price is probably not the market price. It's probably going to be a little bit lower than that. Uh, in the down, you can see it from the graphs, right? You can see the trend. Uh, as, as long as there is a sale, the trend is massively on the decline on the majority of these promos. I find it very, very scary, in my opinion, how many of these promos were able to be shifted. And, and again, these things were never sold, right? They were just kind of given in these packages. So you don't even have the initial buying record of that. So the volume on these cards are extremely rare because at least you would think that they could sell once from Rudy to you. But Rudy is not selling them. He's selling them as part of a bundle. And it is a really, really genius way to offload cards that are not valuable but make people believe it's valuable, so they buy the bundle at an outrageous price, not realizing that they can't sell the cards because no one sold a card. I think there's a card here where it's never actually been sold. Not a single one copy has been sold on TCG Player, but people are want demanding $50 for it, and the market price is zero. So, again, pretty uh, fascinating. Um, you know, I, I think in terms of what is happening here, um, we can look at I mean, look at the market. That you don't like. I wish like Rudy would teach you this stuff because obviously he is obviously he's taking advantage of people here. I wish he would teach you this stuff instead of teaching you about buying and buying and buying and holding and diamond hands and Ravnica remastered at ten fifty. The fact that he believes Shockland will still be $15 is just, he either is lying or it's just straight up like very bad. I mean, if he truly believes that, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Um, same with his promo cards. He gets it, you know, he gets it. Hey, these people were going to post the buy nows for $5,000, $10,000. Everyone's going to get graded PSA 10 and they're going to throw on eBay for $20,000, right? But he knows that's not real. You know, the buy now price is absolutely not real. And 
You know, it, it, it's not real money. So when you go out and you try to sell something and you saw the buy now price was $20,000 and you're like, oh, I only want 10. That's fair, right? And you're just like, no, because none of those cards have sold for that amount of money. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I just want half a market price. That's a really good deal for you, isn't it? Wink, wink. And it's like, no, I, I can't sell this in the next 90 days. I don't think I can move it. So a lot of times, um, and it's not just Rudy. Rudy is a very good example. And, and this actually is meta zoo cards are pretty much a prime example of what not to do when you buy a collection from somebody or when you sell a collection. Um, it's, a, it's a very good example of what not to do. Because the market price looks good, everything looks. If, if you if you don't click the next button, you probably think that like, his cards are like going to the moon. You click the next button, and there's no liquidity. There's no one buying them, and you're just like, wait a second. If, no, if there's no one buying something, how can the card be a hundred dollars? It's not. I, I'm going to straight up tell you, it's not a hundred dollars. If no one wants to pay a hundred dollars for it, but everyone's listing a hundred dollars, no one want. And let's let's be honest about MetaZoo. How long does it have? the lifespan of MetaZoo have and how long is Rudy Chan's lifespan? It looks like he's trying to exit the space. I mean, he's got that new grading company, right? Got to promote the grading. It looks like he's very busy and he wants to exit the space. That's what it looks like to me. I own a business too. I know what demands are and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes fewer and fewer videos, right? The videos he is making is not really getting that much positive reception to begin with. Um, so if he exits MetaZoo, then what will his cards be worth then? Not $100, I promise you that. Anyway, hi guys.